Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with bilateral fully cleaning earwax, and I'm just commencing with this, their left ear first. They attend every couple of years, and so they've got a few hairs just at the entrance of the ear canal. Um, and what I'm trying to do is detach this wax from the floor of the ear canal wall, but it's a bit of a... Um, a skin adhesion here is quite thick, sticky skin adhesion. So immediately I felt that resistance. I've just put just a little bit of medical grade olive oil, not too much. And the reason why we use medical grade olive oil is that unlike extra virgin olive oil, um, uh, medical grade olive oil contains a higher level of um, antioxidants. Uh, I forgot the exact name of these, but um, there's a certain level of antioxidants that... Uh, medical grade olive oil should have in order to be classified as medical grade olive oil and the benefits of having this high level of antioxidants is that it helps to um, maintain uh, uh, the correct level of free radicals so um, our bodies are always producing free radicals and free radicals are molecules that have got an incomplete outer shell they're missing an electron so um, even um, respiration, uh, when it creates, uh, uh, when you're using oxygen and it's converting that into um, energy um, and then also carbon dioxide and water, that process, it creates free radicals. Um, so these are oxygen scavengers and they're looking to complete their outer shell of electrons. Um, so if you're in the chemistry side of things, um, it'll kind of make a bit more sense, I suspect. And so if there's an abundance of free radicals, they can start doing a lot of damage to um, cell tissues. Um, so a classic example is when you uh, cut into an apple or an avocado and you get all these influx of free radicals and they're basically taking electrons away from the flesh. So that uh, kind of oxidises the... The, the apple or the avocado so obviously in our body we, we don't want that but free radicals are actually important they, they do help um, to, if, if they're maintained at a correct level they help transfer signals from um, cell to cell and even within a, a cell body itself so a, f a few free radicals are important but too many are bad for us so medical grade olive oil because it's high an antioxidant level it helps to maintain a healthy um, level of free radicals in the body and um, it has a longer shelf life, so uh, which is obviously very important if you're going to be if it's going to be on the shelf for uh, purposes of putting in your ear. So uh, medical grade olive oil, like extra virgin olive oil, it's cold pressed, so there's no heating or solvents used. Which again, that's what helps retain these high levels of antioxidants. And I think with medical grade olive oil, it's a certain olive branch or tree, sorry, from a certain region. Uh, I'm going to just double check that. So we've cleared this ear. This patient's eardrum is retracted. It's dull. It's retracted not only at the top in the attic region, but also in the posterior superior quadrant. So in the case of the this patient, it's their left ear. We're looking around two o'clock, uh, half two. That portion of the eardrum is retracted. They, they suffer from chronic negative middle ear pressure due to uh, an obstruction of the eustachian tube. They are awaiting an ENT appointment. Um, when we do their right ear, you'll be able to see the, the retraction in more detail because it's more of an evident um, retraction in the attic in the past flaccid and I've, I've taken a, a frozen a still image of that and I've got an arrow to annotate that for you guys. So guys, um, if you haven't noticed already, uh, earlier today I uploaded a video which debunks the, the myth behind ear candling, also known as ear coning or thermal auricular therapy. It is a complete myth. It's been debunked on several occasions uh, in different techniques, but I thought of a really good way of doing it today. Um, I did two conditions um, and watch the video, guys. It's on the YouTube channel. I'm going to put the link in the description. Um, so I won't talk too much about it. But basically, um, the, the science, the pseudoscience, should I say, behind it is it's a it's a, um, a hollow candle with one tapered end and one wider end. And the tapered end you put into the ear canal um, and the other end you light. Uh, and obviously it starts to burn the, the candle, which is made up of beeswax or paraffin or even soy wax. And as it does, it creates hot air. And this hot air, it's like a chimney effect. It rises and it creates a suction effect um, in the ear. And that's purported that it can suction earwax out of the ear. And at the end, um, you unravel the candle or the, 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 the person.
person who performed the procedure. You can do these things yourself because you can buy them online. And they show you all this debris and it's claimed that this debris is earwax. And obviously there's been scientific studies where this debris has been analysed. So what I did, I, I harvested some earwax and I made it a really, really dark colour earwax. So it's a completely different colour to the candle itself. Uh, I used a test tube. Um, so condition eight, I just put the candle into the test tube, no wax, lit it and then unraveled it. And obviously I had all this debris, but it wasn't earwax because there's no earwax in the test tube. Um, and then condition two, I put some earwax in the test tube, put the candle in. Uh, and again, the, you could see that the earwax was still in the test tube, hence why I used the test tube, because it's C3, you could see it. Uh, and I did this all live, I didn't edit the video. I, you, you, if you watch the video, you'll be able to tell that there's no editing, it was a complete live reel, because I didn't want any accusations that I'm making this stuff up. Um, which already has kind of, well, no one said I've made it up, but there's a few comments on TikTok, which I'm in chuckling at. Um, uh, so believers will be believe believers. Um, and yeah, condition two, again, the, the earwax was still in the test tube, unraveled the candle. You had the same, we actually had less debris in the candle uh, compared to condition A, where there was no earwax in the test tube. Um, so people are saying to me, well, an ear canal doesn't really resemble a test tube. Yeah, of course it doesn't, but uh, an ear canal has more narrowings. It has bends and twists, there's hairs there. So I don't see how an ear, ear canal is going to provide you with improved or all the results that these people are hoping for, because in fact, it's the other way around. Using a test tube is actually making it more likely for the wax to come out of the test tube because it's it's straight, it's minimal friction, but with an ear, as you can tell, I mean, you can see with this video, there's hairs everywhere, there's bends and twists, narrowings. It's going to be more harder. For, it's more harder for me to suction wax. This is probably the best way of paraphrasing it. It's much more difficult for me to suction wax from a narrow, bendy, twisty ear canal with loads of hairs than a straight, really uh, smooth ear canal. Um, um, the other, another comment was that um, the temperature of the ear would need to be at the same temperature of the test tube in order for it to be a valid test. So I just went back and I asked, well, um, would that mean that the temperature of the test tube would need to be higher or lower in order to be equivalent to um, that of the ear canal? Um, and another comment was, and I, the other comment was actually more, uh, I understand where they're coming from because this is, this is how it's also portrayed it's not only portrayed that it suctions wax but they often say it softens the warmth softens the wax it melts it basically it helps the near's natural migration process to remove the wax but then in order for that to work the candle would be need to be in your ear almost permanently because this, the, the wax migrates out of the ear at a rate of 0.05 millimeters a day so around 1.5 millimeters a month and considering the ear canal is um 30 uh, millimeters it's going to take a long long time for that to occur so um yeah it's <laughs> so watch that video it is i think it's a really informative video i know it's going down well uh, with a lot of my colleagues as well because they were trying to because it is quite a common thing so i'll come back to that so you saw this bit of wax just at the top of the eardrum in that region there i wanted to remove that because this is a hot spot for a cholesterol the post flaccida region, that's that re that's, we call that the posterior uh, superior quadrant, or probably in here it's more of an attic, but it's in that region and the eardrum is sucked in there and that creates a pocket and I hope you can see that pocket. So sometimes skin, as it's migrating off the eardrum, it falls into that pocket and that's the start of a cholesterol which is a destructive skin cyst, which can be very, very dangerous. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well and speak soon. Bye.